Uh, Mary, I think we can open up for uh, voice questions now if people want to ask something. And oh yeah, there was a thing about uh, path mapper, which uh, the question was, can you can you use variables in the path mapper? So what what we're planning for Grasshopper two, and this is not a promise. I repeat, not a promise. Is to have the ability to to use any kind of of parameter as an emitter parameter. So, for example, if there would be a slider somewhere that goes from uh, zero to five to twenty, you can say, well, the slider is called MP, and there will be some option here that says make this thing an emitter. At which point there will be something probably drawn like I don't know, like some kind of emitter object. And then in here, in any expression, be it inside uh, an expression inside a parameter, such as, for example, here, or an expression which is actually an expression object, like these ones, you'll be able to, uh, you'll be able to use that ah, <laughs> uh, np as, as a variable. And that will work, hopefully. But uh, for the time being, it doesn't. It, it, it doesn't know where, where, where to look for for this thing called NP. Oh yes, there's a question about the the, the wild cards. Uh, let me go back to what I had before. The question is, what's the difference between stars and question marks? Uh, question marks indicates any single number. Right, so uh, if I want to select all of these, all of these paths, I could say, well, it's uh, zero comma zero comma question mark, and fine, three. Let's leave it in there because this will match. Uh, it has to have a zero at the start, which is this one here. It has to have a zero at the second place. And at the third place, it can have anything it wants. So this actually selects all of those paths. We can make it a bit more complicated. We can say, well, I'd like you to select anything that has a anything that's allowed in the first place and the second place, but it has to have a nine in the third place. And this will only select the one that has a nine in the third place. Here. The difference between a question mark and a star is that a star represents any number of different numbers. So this just means that, that, this, that every path which ends in a line will be selected. And I don't care what's in front of it, if it's one number or no numbers or 15 numbers. If it ends in a line, I will select this path. Or I can say, well, so please select every path which has a nine anywhere inside of it. it. It can be followed by something or nothing. It can be preceded by, by something or nothing. But this one allows me to basically just uh, represent multiple numbers in a single way. Uh, where can you find these rules? Well, <laughs> th this webinar would be one place. And I also put up a, a post recently. I think yesterday or the day before, which explains some of these rules on Grasshopper. Uh, I don't remember what it's called. And of course, come Grasshopper 2, we will have proper documentation, and all this will be explained in the actual help file of these objects. Because right now, the help is, is pretty much useless. But for Grasshopper 2, we are planning to provide proper help content for every component that explains about these things, and explains what's possible, what's not possible, and what you can do to select or filter or map trees. Uh, discussion forum. Yes, this one here. Data tree selection rules actually lists all the possible ways to select, to, 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 to make those symbols. And I explain briefly how it would work on a tree that has letters inside of it. So there's a list here. Any number of integers, any single number, any specific number, anything except a specific number, and so on down the line. 
groups, ranges, sequences, both infinite and finite. And the operators for OR and AND in between those two. Uh, we haven't even begun writing it yet. Uh, I am here in Seattle right now to discuss what sort of features we're going to add to it, what sort of things are going to be worth investing several months of, of, of effort in, in, into doing. I'm hopeful the first beta of GH2 will be in a few months. But uh, it's, it's, it's going to be another long-term project before it's actually finished. I mean, Grasshopper 1 has taken, I think, five years by now to actually go from, from zero to, to where we are now. And we're almost done. And there'll be a number of pretty big rewrites in Grasshopper 2 for, which means that a lot of code has to be th thrown out and just uh, designed from scratch again. There's a question which makes uh, which makes no sense. Is GH2 going to utilize 64-bit processing more? Uh, you either use 64-bit or you don't. There's no less or more in there. If you run Rhino 64-bit, then it will use 64 bits. One of the things we're going to try is make sure that uh, Grasshopper 2 can solve these components in multiple threads. So it, can, it actually runs on four services at the same time on four different processors. But that's something, again, it's not a promise. We're going to try and do it and see how far we get. Sure. Uh, oh, yeah, there's, there's another question here. Will Grasshopper 2 be fully integrated into Rhino 6 or a plugin? Uh, Grasshopper 2 will be a plugin, but Grasshopper 1 will be part of Rhino 6. And you'll be able to run both Grasshopper 1 and Grasshopper 2 beta at the same time in the same Rhino. Can I check an answer quickly? Uh, do you see, can a sequence be squares instead of, of uh, so instead of having a, 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 a linear progression like 2, 4, and then repeat? Can they be squares? And the answer is no, <laughs> not yet. In, in, in fact, you, you, you can type any sort of expression here. It's only numbers. But because this is all quite new, I mean, I, I wrote this two days ago in a rush for this workshop. So uh, I'm hoping to add more flexible no notation later. Well, will there be example JH definitions to use all the components? The idea is yes. Uh, in Grasshopper 2, there will be a proper help, and every component which has a help file will have at least one example file showing off that component. Uh, we're also planning to make a glossary, which is quite extensive, so all the words will be used. And we, furthermore, we, we plan to make the help. Uh, not really open source, but uncompiled, if you, if you like. So all the help text is available directly as text files in Grasshopper. And er everybody who wants to add topics or translate it into German or Taiwanese can do so. And, and it'll work without comp for compiling or without any kinds of difficult steps. It'll probably be a tiny bit slower, especially if you use the, the indexing. Oh, sorry, if, if you create a, a map which has indexing in there, it'll actually run through all the items in all the branches. So if, if you can get away without using the I, it'll be a lot faster. But the speed, it shouldn't be too bad. Uh, it'll be a bit slower, but, but at the same time, it's also a lot more flexible, and it's a lot, you can actually do things that, that you cannot do with components, so there's, you, know, you don't have a choice sometimes. Uh, t t t Sorry, I go on. <laughs> uh, Timo uh, elaborated. He, had, he said that if I have uh, three sliders with three numbers, can I create a single path from that? Right, so for example, if you have a, well, let, let's actually go to a proper gene map here. If I have three numbers, no decimals, uh, and zero to 10, 
can I create a, a path or a string from this slider? And the answer is yes, there are several ways. Uh, the easiest way would be to go into sets and use the, uh, the deconstruct path and construct path components. So this creates a path from a list of numbers. In this case, it just does directly what, what you want. You could also ask, uh, choose to, to use string operations for this. So you can go into uh, sets text, use join text, I think. Yes, all this text. Join with the semicolon space, which gives us, well, 0 0.1. So that's a bit uh, of a problem, but you can probably run that through. Yes, there we go. So an integer. And then you would still have to put uh, curly brackets around them using either con concatenation or formatting. But the easiest way is definitely to, to use construct path for this. Similarly, if you have a path and you want to peel it apart, then you can use the other one. You can say, well, please deconstruct this into its constituent numbers again. So that those, those two uh, components are quite useful there. How can I locate all the points on such a grid that are lower than others around it, but where I create a grid on a wavy surface? Ah, uh, that is actually not possible using selection logic because it doesn't, it doesn't know it's selecting points, it's just selecting data items. So you, you, you cannot add additional logic which actually operates on the data like points or numbers or colors or curves. If, if you want to select points which are below other points, you'll have to create a, a, a curl pattern for every point, or, or rather, rather for, for the whole list, for the whole tree, which is a bit more work, but it's also a much more complicated problem. So these, these uh, mapping and selection and off, uh, item components they don't care what sort of data they're, they're working on. They're, they only care about the, the way the data is structured in, inside a data tree. So the question is, I think, since, it is, since the, the way that brackets work has changed, will all files still work? And the, the answer is, by and large, yes. Uh, the only place where it will break is if you have used the split tree component with a, a specific subset of, of mappings in it here. Uh, mostly they're, still, they're still the same, but if you had, if you'd used uh, round brackets or square brackets before, then that will no longer work. Then you have to actually go in and change your square brackets to round brackets before it will work again. Square and round brackets for the time being inside both path mapper and the uh, relative items. I'll try and make it work for both. And it, it is really only strictly in a split tree with the, the complicated, uh, with, with these things, that there has to be a very clear distinction between square and round brackets. Uh, well, they're here directly in the editor. So you can actually use the, these three numbers and I, actually, I think this one actually has a little bit of help, but it's so terribly written and it's so dry that it's really, I wouldn't recommend reading it. Yeah, so there, there, are, there are three constants. Uh, it knows for every, for every branch how many items there are. So you can use that item count constant to, to, to basically count backwards from, through a branch. It knows how many paths there are in the entire tree, so you can use that as a constant. And it knows the index of the current path it's at. So those three constants are available to you to use in notation here. Twine, uh, yes. Uh, okay, so there's, there's merge, which takes a bunch of data and, and just plunks into a single tree. And entwine is a bit more complicated. What it does is it actually flattens all the data first and then outputs it. 
So if I have three sliders, they will all have the same. Uh, well, they're, they're all the same object. So all this, this number is stored at curly bracket zero close bracket item zero, and when I merge them, they basically just become they end up in the same branch because they all they all maintain their original path. If I were to entwine them. Then I can actually specify that each one has to go into a different branch. And to be fair, there are very similar components. And I'm going to try and unify uh, a lot of components for GH2 to see if I can actually put this into a single one that maybe has an option in it somewhere for sw switching between entwine or merge. And yeah, you, you, you can change these even. So this is a uh, fixed. 0 0.2 or, or 0 semicolon 2. So, so it, no matter what you do, it always ends up in these separate paths. So because they're so similar, I think there's no reason to have two separate ones that do something so different. And, and the same is for true for things like uh, like dispatch and pick and choose and weave and sift pattern. I mean, they, they all are very, very similar components. So it, it would, would be nice if we could just go to a single component which does all of these things at the same time or as an option. That some GH functionality can be used inside a Python component. And will future versions of GH have full, fully accessible functionality inside scripting components? Uh, Actually, the answer is that future versions of Python will have this, this, this option. While I was here, uh, Steve Baer, who is our main Python developer, actually made it possible to use components as function calls in Python. So you, you, could, just, you, you could call up a function and say d1, d2, d3, and it returns a named tuple with all the outputs. And so you, you, can, you can use Bournois, you can use Jitter, you can use all these components. And it, 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 they don't even have to exist. They, they'll be made, populated, solved, and then once you have to return values, they'll, they'll, they'll disappear again. So it's actually a really nice way to use those, to, to use the native functions in Python. And I think that may go out at the next release, at the next update of Python. If you have further questions, we'll see you on the forum or well, I did on, on the forum, preferably not on my email. It takes me a long time to respond. <laughs> okay.